ads are really good at getting clicks. It's very rarely the ad's fault. It's what happens after the click, right? So that's the thing that makes the ad work really. Today, we wanted to tap into Johnny's advertising expertise for Facebook ads and YouTube ads because we've been asked what are some common mistakes that online coaches make with Facebook ads? So I think it's something that we get a lot of people come to us who have tried Facebook ads and have concluded, oh, they don't work or I've tried it and it wasn't profitable. So I've now switched to doing organic or something high else. ticket or whatever yeah. else. So there's a couple of very common like in like beginner mistakes. I think the first one is this error of like thinking ads are the, the fix all. So you don't have, like if you imagine this, like ads get clicks basically at the most basic level. Like they get a click from a certain type of person. So unless you know that when someone clicks on something, they're going to give you their email address and they're going to do this step, and they're going to do this step, and they're going to do this step, and then a certain percentage of them buy on average, then it's just guessing. So like ads are really good at getting clicks. It's very rarely the ad's fault. It's what happens after the click, right? So that's the thing that makes the ad work really. So you pay these platforms to show bit images, videos to your, your market, and hopefully your market click on them, like if the ad's done the work and the targeting's right. But after that, it's not ads that's the problem. It's everything else. Um, but assuming you've got the funnel set up and assuming all that's working, generally what people do, so if we talk about like Instagram and Facebook, and we did this, is they press boost post or they use like ads manager on their phone and will like promote a post that's just a bit of content that doesn't even have a link in it to their friends, like people who like their page or their friends or something like that and wonder why it doesn't really do anything. It's like, what did you expect would happen? Like what's the <clears> post? So, so the, I guess what you're saying there is the, the post that you're boosting is the thing that you should be focusing on. It's not because otherwise if you just push a bunch of traffic to it, yeah. and the post doesn't have a proven track record of producing a certain outcome, mm -hmm. then more of that isn't going to do anything. Yeah, and the response is generally like, well, I was trying to grow my following or get more followers. It's like, well, all you're doing there is, imagine you've, just, you've got this huge room with loads of good things in the room and you're saying like, oh, everybody come in this room and just you just sort yourself out and hopefully some of you will ask me, ask, see if you want to work with me. Like there's loads of bits of content on your Instagram, but they'd probably be best consumed in a certain sequence. They'd pro like people will have questions. People might just click on it and then disappear again. Um, and so it's, it's a very, like, it's obviously it's nice. Like more followers isn't a problem, but you're spending money to do that. So if you're going to spend money to do that, you better have some kind of reliable mechanism to, to try and get the money back again. Or, or you, you need a, an infinite pot of money, which not very many people have. Um, so that's, that's one of them. So like, Pressing boost post being uh, sort of like picking bits of content that we're, we were never really going to work anyway and thinking that ads will fix the problem. Um, the, the other one is, which is a, a bit more of an advanced problem, is like sometimes people will have a funnel that works. They will um, they realize that they have to go through their ads manager properly and set things up properly and install the Facebook pixel and all this sort of stuff. And then they will put 10 interests in their ads. So they'll think, right, what might my target market do on social media? Like, oh, well, if they, they watch this TV show, they read this magazine, they follow this influencer, they're into Weight Watchers, they use the MyFitnessPal app. So you throw all those audiences into Ads Manager and you get an audience that's 200 million people and you turn ads on for 10 pounds a day. And all you're doing is, it's a, a droplet in a, an ocean of an audience from a from Facebook's perspective, so that the chance of them finding in that 200 million people what your target market's pretty slim. But also, let's say it did work, which audience was it? Which interest was it? Like, there's too many variables at once. So that's not generally how we recommend testing things. So you might have spent, you might spend 500 pounds, and all of that 500 pounds might have been on audiences that were never going to work anyway. But you would just say, well, all of those things don't work because I tried all of them at once. The same with images, the same with ad creative, ad copy, targeting options, settings, like you want to isolate the things that you're testing and do it in a scientific, systematic way. Because what you're trying to arrive at is when I combine this image with this bit of ad copy and this audience, 
it gets clicks and opt-ins from a certain type of person who ends up buying my program at the rate that I need them to buy, need them to buy at. When you find that combination, you just spend more money, right? But it's a, it's the process of finding that that combination of things. That's the challenge. It's not just throwing mud at the wall and trying to pick out what worked. It's progressively testing things and arriving at that outcome. So, it sounds like the first approach that you're saying there of having a 200 million person audience and just throwing everything at it is acting as if you have one shot and yeah. you've got your entire ads budget and you're like, well, I've just got to go for a Hail Mary here and just throw everything at it. And it doesn't matter if I don't learn anything because it just needed to work compared uh, to this is one shot of many and I want to be running them f for the next few years. So definitely. how can I figure out what are the ingredients that are going to get the most return? I think the reason people behave like that and feel like they do just have one shot is because they don't trust the thing they're sending the clicks to, right? Like they're like, oh, well, I have this one thing. I have 200 quid. I'm going to spend that money on ads. And if it doesn't work, then I need to go back to offline PT, right? That That's not how ads are never going to fix the problem if that's how you're approaching it. Um, and I think what you just said there of like, you want it to be working for 10 years or five years or whatever. I think you want to view it as like, when when this doesn't work what then like what am i going to do next so you test one of those interests with a very small age range you test like a five hundred thousand person audience with some ad creative and when that doesn't work it's like well it's the next test it's the next experiment and like that it's painful right because sometimes you spend money on ads and you don't get the money back and it feel, you think well oh, ads don't work but if, if everybody who'd ever run Facebook ads just ran one test and then stopped, then no one would have ever made money on ads ever. So it, it is just this process of ruling out things that don't work so you can find the combinations that do. And that's that, you know, when you see people saying like, I made a 10 times ROI on ads, it might have been for a period of time, but they're not, what they're not talking about is all the effort and the spend they put in to test to get to that point. And that's what a lot of people aren't willing to do. So. I suppose to summarize beginner mistakes, it is all like thinking it's going to happen really quickly. It's the same as diet and training, right? Think it's going to happen really quickly. Think it's just, well, do all of the exercises, do, take all of the supplements, eat none of the calories all at once, and I'll lose loads of weight, right? Like instead of progressively, slowly, sensibly build out this plan that might take me six months to get right, but I'll have done it in a way that will last me forever versus something that lasted 28 days. Nice. I can definitely see the appeal of wanting to just go in the gym, smash every muscle, take all the supplements, just like yeah. throw everything at it and think, well, something's got to work. But I, I still train like that. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's when it's cash that is not renewable. And then what have you done? You've blown your budget or the worst case, even worse. What if it works? What if it's amazing? Yeah. Then what? Oh, great. I've, um, I've made a hundred times ROI on my ad spend, but I don't know what it was that made it work so well. Yeah. Cause the, I think like really the best problem to have with ads is you find typically the, the process is like you'll, you'll find two or three interests or demographics that work. Right. And when I say work, I mean, you spend a hundred pounds, for example, to acquire a customer that spends 200 pounds initially and then goes on to spend a hundred pounds a month for months on end. Right. So let's say your target for acquiring a customer is a hundred pounds, 150 pounds. And this audience of 500,000 people, it's a certain interest. You find that that starts generating customers for that price. Right. The, the problem you then run into is, well, I want to get more customers from that. So I'm going to spend more, but as you spend more, you start running into this sort of entropy problem where your cost per lead might rise or you're, you know, you're using more and more and more of that audience, but that's such an efficient use of your budget because you're spending money on just audiences that you know, contain your customers, right? right. Versus if you're spending a thousand pounds on lots of different stuff, 800 of that might be wasted. 200 might be doing something and 800 might be wasted. So as you scale your spend, you're walking on a narrower and narrower rope. So you need to make sure that it's efficient yeah. as you scale. Yeah. And like the, the, the way to scale beyond that point is to find a second audience that works and then a third audience that works. But you can start to see how like, as the numbers get bigger, this needs to be a very systematic process. If it's just like, oh, all these things might work, then 
you're really never going to get to the point where you can say, okay, it's time to find a second audience that's, that's proven. Or I know that these five ad creatives, they're my proven ad creatives. So I'm going to take those and that's what I'm going to find new audiences with. So it, it does really need a lot of thought behind it rather than just, uh, I've heard Instagram ads are good. Let's press boost post. Well, there's one of the big unsung values of hiring a coach, which you mentioned last episode in podcast land, which is that by hiring a coach who has done a hell of a lot of testing with ads, in our case, I think about a million pounds in ads over the over the years, is or, Might be. Yeah. Or getting there. So what you're doing is you're you're getting the shortcut. You're getting a head start on all that testing. Otherwise, you've got to do all that testing yourself. Much easier to say, well, we've tried that, didn't work. Try this, and then you've saved yourself a bunch of cash. Yeah, and I like. I still feel like I'm learning as well. It's it's weird. Like I don't think you ever. It yeah. It's yeah. More... We're, we're we're not gurus. We're not like we we're just people who have done this a lot more. And I think when anyone steps into the position of saying like, oh, we've cracked it, we, we've understood the secret, like either they are a ex Facebook employee that is about to get a, a hit put on them mm -hmm. get whacked. <laughs> or they're, they're lying. Yeah. I think as well, it's, it's very different running ads in, this is something that's never spoken about really. Like a, a lot of the business teaching, a lot of the business guru market are teaching the funnel they're using to get business coaching clients. So like, it's very similar to what we use in Propane Business, right? It's a, an ad to a, a VSL, video sales ad or a webinar through to a core booking, through to buying a program, right? That's generally how business coaching is sold. There's lots of specific reasons for that, but it generally like sits well with sort of a business to business market because people want to have a conversation with the coach and there's a lot of moving parts in business coaching. And also someone who's going to buy a business coach will also probably sit and watch a one hour training. If they won't, like they're probably not going to buy business coaching. Whereas a fitness consumer, it's different. Like the way they buy is different. The prices they'll buy at is different. The ad copy, the way they just generally are marketed to is different. And so we've definitely found in fitness ads and business ads, it's really different in how they, in the awareness levels of the market, right? You're selling to a PT and the, the coach who's teaching you, like what they are learning and what they're applying on their business is, they're selling to people who know what Facebook ads are. They're selling to people who know what funnels are, who know what all the sales tactics are. In a fitness market, they don't know that. They don't even really know it's an ad, right? They're like, we've had it before where like people will comment on the ad and say like, Margaret, are you there? And stuff like that, right? <laughs> they, they think, oh, it's just, this is appearing on my Facebook. That's my Facebook. It's just me and my friends, right? And it might, it sounds ridiculous, but that that's people's perception of things. So you have to be very... It has it's very considered what you're doing in marketing to marketing your personal training online. And so I think what we have like there'll be people who spend way more ad spend than us, but what we have to offer is like I don't think very many people who are teaching that stuff have spent a lot of money on online PT. I'm sure someone will tell me I'm wrong about that. But I think it is it's very different, in my opinion. Makes sense. It's gotta be appropriate to the audience that you're marketing to. And Definitely. and you you've tried doing the um VSL auto webinar type funnel to fitness audience and didn't really work. It's just, yeah, it's at odds with how they make decisions, right? Like in one, of, in what other scenario in their life do they buy anything like that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, they're not ringing, ringing, like speaking to people on the phone to buy stuff online. It's not, not how it works. So there we go. We have got to dash because we have another, we have a weekly team meeting. So a little, little peek behind the scenes there, but hope that was useful for you guys. There's some common mistakes that coaches make for ads. We have also covered um, how to get a massive bloat and whether you should pass a pearl through your urethra or vomit <laughs> a kilogram of honey every day. So that's going to help you <laughs> to grow your online fitness business. If you want to have a chat with us about how we can help you, you can always book in a call. There's many ways to get in touch with us. I will put the link in the description and next week, we will cover Louis's question on how to use social media tactics that successful PTs use while still being yourself and retaining your authenticity without pointing at words on a screen and being like, if you struggle with your fat loss 
then avoid these exercises. If you're hearing that on podcast, you you didn't see me pointing and oh, doing God, my, Yusuf sounds my, unwell. My best TikTok performance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bye bye.